drive, for instance, and we actually created a partition on it, and then we mounted it in the file system, and I showed you how you could use the, the UID ID of the partition to um, identify that uniquely in the system, so we wouldn't have that issue with the file system sliding around, because remember, if we have an SDA one, and an SDB one, and an SDC one, right, those are all separate drives with one partition on them, and we were to lose the SDA drive, what would happen when the system rebooted up, it would literally move that drive to SDA, and it would move this drive to SDC to SDB, right? So it does this sliding of drives in the letters, because what happens when the system comes up, it just looks at the drives as they're being initiated, and then, you know, it just loads them in there, and it give, assigns them a letter in the dev file uh, structure. And that's a problem. We looked at how we can solve that. So that's traditional drives and access. What we can do, well, well, there's a limit with traditional drives and access, and here, here's the limit right here. So let me clear this out here. So let's say we have a drive, and that drive is S D B one. And we have that drive mounted in slash sales. So that drive is mounted in slash sales, and we'll say the drive is 10 gigs in size, right? So it's, it's a small little partition, too small for what we're trying to do in the modern world. But we've mounted it, we had it, we mounted it there. And time goes on, and the sales team is growing, growing, growing all the time. And next thing you know, we're running out of space, and we're getting complaints from sales that they need more space. Well, the problem with traditional ways of looking at disks is that we have really one or two choices. We can add a larger drive to the system. So we can we can literally go out and buy a bigger drive, and I'll make it bigger. And you know, let's say it's it's one terabyte in size. So one terabyte in size, and what we can do is migrate the stuff from here to there, right? We can migrate it over and then plug that drive right back into the sales and mount it there. It works, it's disruptive, but it works, right? So we've increased the size, we had to remove the disks, we had to do, we had to do it overnight, whatever it is, but it's, it's, it's going to be a pain in the neck. You know, we do have other options. We could possibly, instead of doing this, what we could do is take another drive and then do something like striping. So stripe it, build a stripe, you know, array, a RAID array, a striping RAID array between this old drive and the new drive. So they'd have to be the same size, and there's all issues with that, but that could work also. The other option is that we can get a new drive. So this drive would be SDC1 with the first partition. And then we could mount that in a subfolder of sales someplace. And that would give them more space. But then we have to tell everybody, oh, by the way, when you save files, don't save it to the default place. Save it to the new subfolder under sales. Once again, not ideal. So none of those situations are ideal. But you know that's the way it is in the real world. And that's what you would have to do if you didn't have an alternative. Well, we do have an alternative. And the alternative that we have is something called LVM, Logical Volume Management. LVM allows us to dynamically grow or shrink a file system as we need it, on the fly, no rebooting necessary. So we could, for instance, if we went back to our little scenario with sales here, we could have the sales directory with LVM, and we could have our, you know, what we picture as our drive loaded there, but this is going to be an LVM volume this time, so this is an LVM volume. And we could say it's 10 gigs in size initially, and we mount that 
underneath sales, and so sales gets it. Well, with LVM, unlike regular um, partitions or regular drives, if we need to expand this, all we would have to do is buy a new drive and literally add it to the LVM volume group. And then immediately, whatever size this drive is, it will expand that LVM, and sales will just get instantly more space. So it is the perfect solution when you're trying to dynamically grow things. So as your needs grow, you can just plug in hard drives into the system, add them to the LVM group, and then the group will grow, and you can literally, on the fly, add that information to Right, exactly, kind of like a storage pool, exactly. So it, it, it is a, it's the same, same technology. I'm sure that, um, you know, uh, Windows is using this LVM technology and calling it storage pool. I can't tell you that for sure, Dennis, but I know how Windows works, and I assume that's, that's exactly what they're doing. Because it used to be years ago that LVM was a technology that was put out, I think, by HP. Yeah, by HP, and so it was proprietary... Uh, technology and then it was set to open source and so this flexibility of being able to grow is very very nice but there are some concepts that we need to understand and so it, it, it it's great it's flexible it works it's beautiful but you know it's different than we're usually used to working with a system so let's talk about the concepts we'll, we'll discuss the concepts and then we'll look at actually implementing LVM. So once again, we'll talk about LVM tonight, and then in our next lecture, next Monday, we'll discuss RAID, a RAID array, and, and getting those all set up. All right, so let's say we buy a couple of new drives, so two new drives. We have these two new drives. So these are physical drives, right, and physical drives, and what we do with those drives is the first thing we want to do is convert them over to these physical volumes. So we take the physical drives and we convert them over to physical volumes. And we do this with the LV or PV create uh, command. So PV create will allow us to do this, to create these physical volumes. Remember, they're drives. All they are, there's nothing fancy about them, but instead of going through the normal process that we would um, and mounting them normally, we have to go through this conversion process. So we convert both these drives over, and we'll say they're one gigabyte in size. I know I live in a, I live in way in the past here, but it's easier to uh, see that when we're doing so, uh, I, I could make them one terabyte in size, but we'll, we'll leave them at one gigabyte. Well, after we create these, turn these hard drives into these physical volumes, what we do after that is create something called a volume group. And the volume group is kind of an interesting concept because we plug these drives into the volume group. Right? We take these drives and we create this volume group out of it. And that volume group is broken into something called extents. And extents are basically just chunks of space. So you take these two drives, and what you end up with is a two gigabyte, two gigabyte volume group that's broken into these extents. And like I said, extents are just chunks. And what we add when we want to expand or contract are these extents to wherever we're mounting our particular partition. So here we are. These are my little extents here. And once again, these things are broken by default into 16 megs in size. And they're really not megs. They're, they're called millibytes. No, not 16. By default, it's 4 millibytes. So they're all 4 megabytes, we'll just say that because it's easier to think of it that way, chunks of the space that's available from these two drives. So we have two gigabytes of 
four megabyte chunks that we can then take, once we have the volume group created, we can then take that and create something called a logical volume. That's a lot of chunks, right? Yeah, sounds like somebody had a long weekend, right? Um, so we can take that and now turn it into a logical volume. So let me get my little pen going here. So once again, this up here, this next layer, is called a logical volume. And this is what we think of when we would think of a normal drive. So as far as mounting goes, as far as the use are concerned, let's go back to our sales technology or sales scenario. This, this logical volume, this LV that we have here, is what we mount there at sales, and that's what gives access to the logical volumes. Now, once again, as far as the users are concerned, this is all transparent. They don't know anything, right, as users usually do. They don't, they're, they're oblivious. All they need is space and, and access, and they're, they're happy. But this scenario, even though it seems more complex, is just so much more flexible, so it's worth the effort of taking the time to learn how to use this, because it provides you, the, the administrator, the ability to manipulate storage in real time, on the fly, anytime you need it. So what's great about this is I take this volume group, turn it into a logical volume. And then I mount that logical volume wherever I need it. Now, in our scenario, as time goes on, so once again, we have, we have two gigabytes of space here, right? So we have two gigabytes of space, or roughly around there. Because once again, it's not, you know, it's like anything else when it calculates space on certain mathematical algorithms where it never comes out quite to be two gigs. And especially with these metabytes or medibytes, they are very different than the other um, megabytes, slightly different in size, so they're a little bit different. But what's great about this situation is, you know, all of a sudden sales comes to us and says, we're running out of space. Well, in the last scenario, yeah, it was a major ordeal, right? It was a ma major ordeal, you know, to, to increase this and get more space to the sales group and the sales folder. In this scenario, it's a piece of cake. So all we would do in this scenario, we would add another drive to our system. And that drive, you know, this, this could be the one terabyte drive we finally have, uh, have, have improved and gone into the 21st century here. And we would take that and create a physical volume. First thing we need to do is create that physical volume. So I should, I should just make that red just like everybody else, right? So we create the physical volume. And then we add the physical volume to the existing volume group. Once we have the existing volume group there, our volume group has expanded. And so instead of having the two gigabyte volume group, we now have a 1.2 terabyte volume group. Well, once we create that volume group, all we do next is plug that into the logical volume that already exists. And then we expand it and resize it. So there's a couple of tools we need to do. It's not as easy as just plugging it in and everything's good to go, right? You're going to have to go through a couple of steps of resizing the file system. Because remember, on this LV right here, this is the place that we actually format. So this is where we format the file system. Right, so this is where we do that. So normally, in a normal scenario, I, create, I have a disk, create a partition. Format, mount, right? That's the steps I go through. Same thing happens here. We just have a couple of more steps that we add to our scenario. So this is, it was two gigabytes, and we'll say it was an EXT4 file system, a Linux file system. Well, expanding the logical volume group is not bad. That, that can be done on the fly with LV commands. 
but the file system also needs to be expanded. And so you have to go through and actually resize the file system itself, and that's a separate option. Once again, your labs that you'll go through will walk you through that scenario and doing that. But once we've done that, right, immediately, immediately what happens is that our users, oops, I lost my little thing there, didn't I? I knew that was going to happen too. Once I do that, immediately our users now have, they went from 2 gigabytes in space to 1.2 terabytes in space. And I can just keep growing it as I need it, or I can shrink it as I need it also. So the flexibility of this technology really just shines.